All right, as we start up today, remember today is the last day that you can fill out that survey for the Higher Learning Commission, that uh, student opinion survey. You should have gotten that a week ago. For those of you who filled it out, thank you. If you haven't, if you would, it's about five minutes long. We all appreciate it. Thank you. That's the first thing. Second thing. Now you got this email from me earlier this week, so I'm going to I'm going to take a minute to go over it. The homework for chapter three was problem number one, which we did in class. That was that centimeter to inch, whatever the heck it was. Number two was the projected raises. Number three, which we also did in class, was the move estimator. All right. Number five and number six. Number five was that make change program and number six was the test interactive GUI. Those are all due, all right, all of those are due um, a week from today, all right, on the 23rd, along with the debugging exercises 1A through 1D on page 131. There were some questions. A few people have come up and asked. They said, well, that's just a C-sharp C file. What are we supposed to do with it? Just give me a couple sentences and say, line three, they didn't put a semicolon on the end. All right, line two, they spelled main wrong or whatever. That's all I'm looking for. All right. All right, then in chapter four, which we went over yesterday, you were supposed to first, this was on pages 181 through 183, it looks like, and you were supposed to first... Go over number two, write a program named Twitter that assigns a user message and determines whether or not it's short enough for the social networking service that does not accept messages of more than 140 characters. All right. Number four, we did in class. This looks, oh, I'm reading the wrong chapter. I'm sorry. This was number three that's due. My fault. Number three, that admissions. We're going to go over that in just a few minutes. I apologize. So that's number three you're supposed to do. Then you're, so, you're supposed to do number four, which was the thing on hurricanes. Number five, which was a thing on the, uh, checking the month and day of the year. And number eight, and I emailed you, everybody, yesterday, the GUI for number eight. We're not going to look at that now, but we are going to go through number three in just a minute. After we get done with number three, we're going to go through chapter five. I had originally said we were going to have the chapter three written test today, but I forgot to remind you yesterday, so we'll have the chapter three written test tomorrow, the chapter four written test on Friday. We, there is no class, remember, next Monday. It's the Martin Luther King holiday, whatever you want to call it. On Tuesday, we'll give you the chapter five written test, and the rest of that period on Tuesday will be lab. And Wednesday of next week, you'll have your second hands-on test on chapters 3, 4, and 5. On that test, I ask you, there's two problems again. I ask you to write one application as a uh, console app and one as a GUI app. All right? So after we get done with chapter 5 today, after we get done with that, going over it, we're going to look at, you know, just so you know what the homework is. They will be on pages 220 and 221. Number two, which is a, a thing with where you sum up integers. Number four, which we'll look at in class. Number six, which is on a multiplication table. And number 13, which is on uh, counting vowels. And we'll do that one in class. All right. My hope is this is the end of the lecture for the week because we went through three, four, and five. But I'd like to go through tomorrow that problem, and then Friday that problem, and spend no more than an hour on each one. Then you should have nine o'clock until 11:55 both days to work on homework. If you're behind, okay, I'd like it turned in. Remember, every day we go over the we go through a chapter, we look at the chapter reviews afterwards. You doing those chapter reviews are due 
the day after the chapter. All right, so the day after we go, go over the chapter, the chapter reviews are due. People are turning them in in different ways, some very creatively. That's fine, as long as I can read them. All right. So with that said, what I'm going to do right now is I sent you an email again earlier this week, and one of the things that was in that email was the, the GUI. Actually, there were three GUIs, or two or three GUIs I sent to you, and I've got more that will be sent later today. But the point is, on those GUIs, should have a folder here. someplace well this is what I'll do oh that was what it was thank you I'll take your word for it yep so I sent you this this had the move estimator GUI thank you that we did as a class yesterday it had the GUI for the rock, paper, scissors, and it had the GUI for the admission. So I'm going to copy that admission one in there. It's a little bit longer than what we went through yesterday, but it's going to allow me to do a few things. Then before, then after we get done with that, we'll take a break. We don't finish all of it before the break. That's fine. We'll take a break by a five to nine or so. And before we go over Chapter 5, I gave you two handouts today. Both handouts have a front and a back. I'm going to go over them with you. If you understand those, and my hope is that you will, it'll probably take about 15 minutes to go over Chapter 5 because they explain everything that's in Chapter 5. I wrote them this morning. They're not fantastic. All right. One of them, the, the, the last one, the bottom one, simulates a clock, and it goes through from midnight through 11.59.59. And there aren't really even that many um, lines of code in it. All right, so we'll go and look at that later. But for now, I'm going to bring up this admission thing. And this is the same one that you have. In other words, it has the interface, but it has no code in it. Now, I've got the code. I wrote it already. All right? So you can follow along. You can key it in. You can do whatever it is you're comfortable doing. But remember... Even these problems that I go over with you as a class, you are still responsible for doing them and turning them in. All right, are there any questions on anything I've said so far? All right, then that said, you'll notice that if I run this as of right now, that calculate does nothing, clear does nothing, exit does nothing, and that is because of the fact that when you view the code, Literally, I've got the routines this kind of stubbed out. In other words, the name is there, but there's no code in any of them. All right? This is a way of doing it. Not, Of course, not the only way of doing it, but it's a way of doing it. The first thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to almost do it in reverse from the other day, what I like to do is I like to consider, you know, I like to, to get a little victory when I start. Typically, the easiest two things to, to code on here are the exit button and the clear button. The exit button we've gone over already. I'm going to put it in in just a minute. But if you look at the clear button here, four lines of code. We want to clear this text box. We want to clear this text box. We want to clear this text box. And we want to put the focus there. That's all there is. All right. What this one is, is we're going to enter a grade point average. We're going to enter an admission score. We're going to click calculate. And if what we put in is within range, it'll either for the admission status will say accept or it will say reject. And we'll look at examples of both in just a couple minutes. I was a little more substantive or substantive uh, in putting in the error checking in here. All right. So that's why it'll take a little bit longer. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the exit button. I'm going to put in that code. And it's the same code you've seen before. So remember, 
this thing that's right here when you do a message box dot show the first thing that appears there all right that is the message itself that goes in there then after the message we've got the title doesn't have to be the same thing can be the same thing doesn't matter oops I, don't know what I did there then we're going to have our buttons and I'll have just a yes or no yes if you press yes you want to exit the program no if you don't want to exit the program and then finally an icon now when you start to go through this I, I haven't really gone, gone through this in a lot of depth and breadth of coverage but even if you're typing just please stop for a second and take a look up on the screen here Oops. when I type in message box icon and if I spell it right and I put in here dot it shows me the different kinds I can put in that is IntelliSense so I can either you know in here that I'm asking a question so I'll use question there and it'll put in a question mark I might have used information before it's not that big a thing all right but really the thing that says error that's right there that's the one that's got the circle with the red X in it you should only use that if somebody's made an error this is not an error situation so I could make it information I could make it a question but really I am asking a question so I'll choose question here again I think I probably chose information before it's not that big a thing equal equal and that's dialog result dot yes so again what that's saying is what I did right there and you gotta spell it right and it's result there we go and what that's saying is if I if I did all that and I pressed yes application dot exit is everybody cool with the fact as far as what's happening here does this make sense to you you know because if it doesn't this is the time for you to ask and again I've shown you this before that's going to build this it's going to build the. it's going to have in capital letters exit program with a question mark and an exclamation point and a question mark then underneath that it's going to have a message that says exit the program now with a question mark and it's going to have a yes button and it's going to have a no button and now it'll have over here a question mark does that make sense all right and what we're saying is if I click this one right here remember this is an if without an else so if I click the if I want to do that action which says to close the program end the program whatever you want to say and if I click the no nothing's going to happen which is exactly what I would want right there so I'm going to save this I'm going to run it and if I click exit there it is do I want to exit the program now no nothing happens run it exit the program now yes the program exits all right and I I tend to write my exit button virtually identical to that other than like I said whether it's question or information every program I write you should always give the user an out does that make sense to everybody you can ask them don't assume that just because they, they click the exit button they want to exit they could have clicked it accidentally all right what we will eventually do just so you see this in fact I think I'm gonna do it in the program today all right is I'm gonna grab this code that you see right here don't don't do this now it's fine the way it is but I'm gonna grab this code I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna write a new routine that's called exit or not all right then I'm gonna put that right underneath here private void exit or not and I'm gonna paste that back in now you might you might think that's fine why are you doing that because eventually what we're going to do if you look up on the screen here we're going to put a menu up here we're going to put a menu up on top and one of those options in menu will be exit so if we exit we'll be able to call that routine either from this button or from that menu 
all right? And I'm not going to go into, into menus right now other than to tell you this is how hard they are, literally. You go down to your toolbox here, you find where it says menu strip, you drag it up there, and there's a menu. So now if I want, I can type in exit right there, hit enter, all right? And it's going to have a name then. It's going to be called, it's got, it gives it a crummy name. It calls it exit tool strip menu item, all right? I'm just going to change that for now to menu item exit. Again, we're going to go over this in a lot of depth and breadth of coverage later. All right, but there is an exit. Then I double click on the exit, boom. I say exit or not. All right, now notice that when I run the program, I can bring up this by either clicking right there or I can now click right there. That's all there is to it but I'm calling the same routine from both the exit menu item and, and from the uh, exit button, all right? And the reason that you might want to consider doing that, and again, we'll get into menus in a later chapter. Don't worry about putting it in right now. You want to add it, you can, but you sure as heck don't have to. It's, it's in a very much later chapter, but sometimes, you know, if you realize when you look on the screen right here, some books will tell you that this screen, that's real estate, all right? And what you put on the screen is what you're putting on your real estate. The point is, you only have a limited amount of real estate. If this gets more and more complex and you add more and more things, you might say, you know what, I don't really want a button there. You might want to remove that exit button and just allow them to do it from a menu. Now I've got that handled. Because again, I'm calling, I'm calling the same routine whether they're doing it from the menu or whether they're doing it from the button. Okay? All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to write the clear routine. We already talked about this, but I want to clear this text box. I want to clear this text box. I want to clear this text box. And then I want the focus to go there. All right. That's not always what you're going to, you know, you, you may want to do other things when you click clear. Not in this program, but in other programs. If I'm accumulating something and I click clear, I might want to set all my accumulators to zero, as an example. But for now, I want to come in here and I want to say text box and I want the grade point average dot text equal to double quote, double quote. The text box, uh, what was it, admissions status, I think. No, that's admission test score. Dot text. I want that to be equal to double quote, double quote. I want the admission status, okay, dot text be equal to double quote, double quote. Finally, I want this. Dot focus. That right there is the entire clear routine. That's everything. There is no more. I'm clearing all three of my text boxes, and then I am setting the focus back to the top text box. All right. I see you're typing, which is fine. Are there any questions on what's being done there? Now, this one right here, just so you know, this is the one that eventually will have a string in it. That string will either say accept or it will say reject. That is, that right there, that is a read-only field. So I'm not going to be able to change it while the program's running. The other two I can change while the program's running. So notice I'm going to click my double disk icon to save, and I'm going to run it again. I'll come right back to the text. In fact, I'll leave it up here. How's that? But when I come in here, I can put whatever I want in here and in here, but I can't type in here because it's a read-only field. But when I click clear now, boom, it cleared them all three fields out, really, even though the one had nothing in it, and it put the mouse, the cursor right there. 
All right. Another thing, you may care, you may not care about this. Either way, it's fine. But again, if you look up on the screen, please, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the code in a minute. But if you look on here, because these are questions that sometimes I get asked. All right. If you notice when you click in here, there is a field that says text. There is no text. I don't want any. But underneath that is a field called text align. And those values are, do I want the text that goes in there to be left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned? You can choose whatever you want. I mean, again, I think you should always shoot for what you consider to be the most professional-looking interface possible. You shouldn't be spending a lot of time on the interface, but whatever you do for the interface should look professional. All right? So we now have our code for our exit button, which, you know, because I showed you the menu, you can call it from two different places. All right? You now have the code for the clear button. So my question is, is there anyone in here who has any questions on either one of those? Are you going to be this out or no. Giving it to no. Okay. Can you scroll down? Down yes. <clears throat> and again, you don't have to do anything with a menu right now. You don't have to. But sometimes people ask me those questions. You know, it's how hard is it to make a menu? Well, you saw how hard it was. All right? It's not hard at all. Eventually, we, for one of your tests, what you will do is you will take an existing program, all right, and you will make it work from either buttons or menu options. All right? I mean, when you look at it, isn't that what they have here? Okay? I, I believe it or not, I just gave you enough information. You'd have to look at it a little bit. You could build that menu that's up on the screen right now. And it wouldn't be very hard. All right. Now I put exit there because that's the only thing that's in there. Typically, exit is either way over here or it's on the bottom of file. All right. Microsoft, you, you know, give the devil its due. Microsoft actually wrote a book years ago on how to write a menu. To make, your, to make your menu look like Microsoft. Because that's typically what they do. They typically have help way at the end. All right? And you can see the other stuff. The other stuff that's there, it's going to depend on what the software is. All right? So does anyone have any questions, again, on anything we've done thus far? Because what's left is the big stuff. And what's the big stuff? The big stuff is writing the calculate button. All right, we're going to do that in just a second. And as we do it, as always, if you have questions, ask. All right, does everybody who needs this code have this code? No. Then you have to learn to type faster. I Then what you might want to do is, if you've got power going to your machine already, is to open it up at home. Even if you close the top, it should remain open then. You know what I'm saying? You might have to log in again, but it, it should go to sleep and the package should still be open. Now, if you're a slow typist, and I had one of my students who graduated last May, was one of the slower typists I've ever seen. But uh, one of the students recommended to him, so this is just for those of you who think you might be a slow typist, there is a program that's called Type Racer. I think it's one word. And literally what it does is it has you, you're a race car, and the faster you type, you know, it's like you're, you're competing against other cars. He found it enjoyable, all right, and he became a better typist. I'm not saying he was the fastest one in the class. He definitely was not, but he did become a better typist over time. All right, now does everybody have it? So that's, that's the exit code. And again, that was the clear code. All right? So I'm expecting that on your next test, if I tell you to have calculate, clear, and exit buttons, that you know how to put those in and you know how to make them work. All right? Again, that, that, that doesn't make any sense for a console program. My hope is that once we get into Chapter 6, 
the majority of the, of the programs that you'll do, you'll want to do console-based. All right. So the next thing to do is the calculate button. But before we do that, I'm going to come up near the top of the program because I actually declared 10 different constants. All right. And you might say, that's a heck of a lot of constants. Yes, it is. Two of them were for the maximum and the minimum GPA. And I said 0.0, .0 was the minimum GPA, One or 4.0 was the maximum GPA. I know that in high schools now, you can get more than a 4. You know what? I don't care. All right, I'm just saying 4 is the max. So that's two of them. Two of them are for the minimum test score and the maximum test score. And I'm imagining the minimum test score you could get would be a 0, and the maximum test score you could get would be 100. All right? Maybe that isn't true, but that's what I put in. Then I have one that if you put in a GPA that's either out of range or you put in a GPA that's non-numeric, I've got one that'll handle that. That's five. I've got one that'll handle your test score if it's not numeric or if it's, um, if it's either not numeric or if it's out of range. That's six. All right. Then I've literally got a message that's going to print out that says, Minimum GPA 0.0, .0 maximum GPA 4.0, minimum test score 0, maximum test score 100. I'm going to print those out. So like I said, these are the, the 10 constants I declared. You can say, wow, you kind of went constant crazy here. Okay. All right. But there are going to be times when you take a test that at least for some of the things you're working with, I'm going to ask that you create constants. By and large, if you create constants with good names, by and large, it makes your program more readable. All right, so here they are. So I'm going to declare and initialize my program constants. And notice when I do this, please look up on the screen. They're not in any method. All right, what does that mean? That means that they're not just program constants. They're global program constants. They can be used anywhere within the program. And I don't have to do anything special to use them in the program. All right? So I've got here const double min GPA equals 0, 0.0. Const double max GPA equal 4.0. Const, this will be an int, and I called it min, it's a long name, I don't know why I used one that long, but min add, admin test score equals zero. Then I have a max admin test, test score, which I said equal to 100. Pardon? Yeah, that's just the way that I wrote it. Non non numeric. You know, it's like you typically have a hyphen in there and I didn't put one in. So this is getting too big, so i got to shrink my screen size down just a tad.
And those are my constants. I'm going to switch back just for a second to the I, to, to the GUI. I want you to see something, okay? Hopefully you all understand when you look at this. I'm going to need three variables in my Calculate program. I'm going to need one variable that's going to be a double that's going to represent the GPA. I'm going to need one variable that's going to be an int that's going to represent the test score. And I'm going to need one variable that's a string that will either have the value reject or accept. Does that make sense? So those are the three variables that I need to be manipulating all right, as the program is going. The stuff that I showed you here, all of this stuff, that's just stuff so that if I want to put something into a message box, I can put it in there to let the user know, hey, you did something wrong. And again, I, I said this before. I can sit there, and if you put in bad input, I can let you know. All right? But unless I only give you two or three tries and then I kick you out, you can just keep putting in bad input if that's what you want to do. Why would you want to do that? I don't have a clue. All right? But the program will, will run fat and happy. If you keep putting in bad input, you'll keep getting error messages. All right? But it'll allow you to keep doing it if that's indeed what you want to do. All right. So, getting down into the calculate now. These will be my variables. Now, these variables that are in here, since I'm declaring these variables inside of my calculate click, they're known as local variables. All right. Global variables are defined, or global constants are defined outside of any routine, and local are defined. Inside of a routine, yes. It'll always be local if it's inside of curly braces like this. So notice these. So if I had declared the variables out here, I could have done that. All right, these three variables that I'm going to create, I could have created them out here. Then they would have been global. They don't have to be passed into any routine. Typically, you don't. It's considered totally fine to make all your constants global like this. That's considered fine regardless of where you're using them. But you should always strive to make your variables local because what that does is it eliminates what are called side effects. That means the only, the only routines that can change this variable is either this routine or another routine that I pass that variable to. But if I make them global out here, that means that if I've got 15 routines, any of those 15 routines can change that. That's bad programming practice. All right? What is that saying? Because a friend of mine used to always say that to his classes. Proper, prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. All right? And that's what we're, we, we don't want that. We don't want that where any routine can change those variables. They shouldn't be able to. All right? Now, does everybody who needs these constants have them? All right. Then I'm going to come down here. And again, instead of declaring and initializing global constants, I'm just going to, when I can, I'm just going to go and grab. So I'm going to declare and initialize, rather, local program variables. And again, there's only three of them. All right. And the first one will be a bool. And it's a, like we did last time. I'm going to call it keep going. And I'm going to set it equal to true. And I just call that my program continue variable. All right. The second one is a double, and it's GPA. And I'm just going to initialize that to 0, 0.0. And then I'm going to have an integer for my test score. And I'm also going to initialize that, but to 0. All right. So what I should do, pretty this up a bit. Right. 
So those are my three variables. By now, hopefully at least, you're, you're okay, or at least you understand the fact, okay, uh, hopefully right now you understand the fact that I got the green squigglies because they've all been initialized and declared, but they're not being used in the program. So those are just warnings. If you put your mouse over here, it'll show you that, and it'll say, if you click that down arrow, it'll give you the chance to get rid of them. I don't want to do that, but I could that way. All right. I want to show you something, too, just so you see this, and I'm going to show it to you later when we talk about loops. But let's assume for a second I'm having problems with these three lines. I'm not, but I'm just going to pretend for a second. If I highlight these three lines, I can go, and if I've got contiguous lines like this, I can do a slash star, a star slash, etc., or slash slash, but I don't know if you know about this. If you look up on the screen, you've got to look up pretty high up here. Notice that if I look, if I go right here, all right, it's two away from that, that black thing. That'll allow me to comment out multiple lines. So everything I've got highlighted will automatically be commented out. See that? And the one right next to it uncomments. So it is a way of quickly allowing you to comment code out that could be problematic. All right. I mean, you can do it line by line, but if you've got you know 30 lines, you want to use the slash star and the star slash. All right. But that's just kind of a quick way of doing it. All right. So I'm going to be working with this. Keep going. Now think about what we want to do here. The first thing I want to do is make sure that that's numeric. All right. We've done this before. But I'm going to take it a step further. Okay? If this if if I call that is numeric function and it returns true, I think you'll all agree we put a number in there. But we don't know if it's a valid number or not. Valid numbers are the ones that we use for our constants. Our minimum GPA, which is 0, 0.0, and our maximum GPA, all right, and our maximum is 4.0. So I'm going to put a test in there that's going to check for those. Then in here. I'm going to run the is numeric again. And again, if it returns true, I put in a number. But then I'm going to check to make sure that the value I put in is greater than or equal to zero and it's less than or equal to 100. So it's going to allow us the chance to use a lot of if logic that we looked at in the last chapter, or in this chapter, really. All right. All right, so I'm up near the top here. And again, I'm going to say if, keep going. And you already heard me say this, but I'm going to say it again. I just want to make sure that as I go through this stuff, you know, if I do it enough times, I don't have to anymore. So this is the same as if, keep going, equal, equal, true. All right? It's the same thing. Again, do I have to do that? No. I can write what that line that you see right there in line 43, I can write it either way. All right? The other thing, and this isn't a big thing, but just so you know, you're going to see many books where, whereas I put the curlies on their own lines, many books will take that first curly and put it right there. Either way is fine. It's all a matter of style. All right, one of the things that you're able to do here in your two years is to create and utilize your own style. All right, and I may have told you about this before, but I'll always remember this, you know, because I'm hard to believe, but I'm a kind of a smart ass. And when I got my first programming job, it was at AT&T Bell Laboratories in Naperville, Illinois. All right, and I got in there and they were talking to me about the C programming language and about a few other things. And, and the guy said, Yep, and this is the way we do things here. And I and then he he put down this this book that was this big. Today, of course, it would be on CD or whatever. I said, "What is that?" He said, "That's our our SOP, our standard oper operating procedural manual." I said, "Am I supposed to read this? It's like a thousand pages long." And he goes, "No, but you get a copy." And I said, "Okay." And he goes, "Oh, and that's volume one. There's three volumes." And there were, there was a certain way we were supposed to do things there. What I'm telling you is while you're here, I don't put those requirements on you. I, I want you to have some creativity. So I want you to do things the way you want to do them. All right. 
It's not my goal in here to, to, to make 13 clones of me. All right? Again, you may have heard me say this, but my wife will come in here and tell you, there's one too many of me right now. And that's not what I want anyway. I want you to develop your own style, your own logic, your own way of looking at things. Yes? I'm just curious, how would your job want you to put that, uh, that one that job? How would they want you to put the trailer there? There? They would have wanted it up here. All right. Okay. So this is going to say it right now. Would everybody agree, looking at the code that's on the screen right now, when you first run this program, that's going to be true. You're going to go into the if. Would everybody agree with that? And that's because you already set it to true right here. All right. So what do I want to do? I want to validate the GPA. All right. If it makes you feel better, I can put it in uppercase. There we go. So I'm going to say here, And again, what I am most concerned with is that you understand what's going on in that line of code. If you do, then I'm doing my job. If you don't, I'm not doing my job. And you'll don't worry, it's not going anywhere. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just move it down a couple lines. So now you can see the is numeric. What that is numeric, we're going to write that in just a second. But what that's going to do is it's going to return true if what we passed into it can be converted to a number, and it's going to return false if it can't be converted to a number. Does that make sense to everyone? And I literally kind of scoured the Internet, and I was lucky because I found it fairly quickly. I wanted to find a very small routine that would do an is numeric. Like I said, I was lucky. What do I mean? It's two lines long. It's all we have to put in here. So I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to write that is numeric, and it's going to say double test. And here it's going to say all right. So that's double right there. Now look at it. It's saying, well, wait a minute. It doesn't like something. So it says it cannot be converted from string to double. Well, we'll fix that right now. All right. So we've got double test. And here we don't want to just return false. We'll want to, in fact, that's a string. I'm sorry. String input. That's why it looks funky. All right. And this will say return double dot try parse input out test. Now, you may or may not have noticed, but now the underlines by keep going, those underlines that are by keep going, they're gone. Because now we're using keep going. So they're gone. Come on, get out of there. So this is saying, right here, we're going to pass whatever we put into the grade point average text box, that becomes input in here. We're going to attempt to parse it into a double. All right, we're going to attempt to parse it into a double and out test right there. Basically, if it's true, we'll return, you know, if, it, if, if we could parse it, we're going to return true right there. If we couldn't parse it, we're going to return false. And if that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, that's probably where you should be. But we talk about this in a lot more depth and breadth of coverage in a later chapter. So why am I showing it to you now? I think it's a good idea for you to learn data validation early. Because if we don't put that in, I could put in a grade point average of 56. That's just stupid. All right? So again, right here, we get into this. Whether or not we're going to, pardon the pun, but whether or not we're going to keep going, all right, whether or not we're going to keep going that right there will, will matter or be determined by, I guess you'd say, it'll be determined by whether or not, all right, it'll be, to be it will be determined by whether or not we put a numeric value in there or we did not 
put a numeric value in there. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to come down to here, and I'm going to put in this, the same kind of thing I just put in. In other words, I'm going to put in another if keep going. All right, in a curly brace here. What I want you to get out of this, look on the screen if you would, please. In order for me to get here, this had to have returned true. Okay? If that hadn't returned true, I wouldn't keep going. So maybe I want an else here. Somebody tell me, if I put an else right here, when does that fire? I'm asking you that question. When do I get into the body, that body where the cursor currently is? Yeah, well, you're all kind of saying it in your own ways, but when we put something invalid for the GPA. All right, so we put something invalid in there. All right, so what do I want to do? One second, and I just want to show you first, and then, then we'll, we'll, I'll take your question. But notice what we have in here now. We can put in that message, which to me makes sense. GPA must be a number between 0 and 4. All right? So that's what I'm planning on putting in there in just a second. Yes? Okay. So that's, again, that's kind of got a long name, so I'm just going to double-click it and copy it. All right? But I want to let the user know. So down here, we've got this routine that we'll write in a minute where we're going to write a message box. And this is telling it what we want it to say, and this is giving it a title. Does that make sense? But rather than having to write message box, message box, 10 or 11 times in this program, I only write it twice. Once for my, my exit and this time. That's why you modularize or you write different routines in code so that they're allowed to be called multiple times in multiple places. All right, so what I want to put in here is I want to call this alert message. And I want to pass it, it says here, a message and a title. Well, the message I want to pass it is that. That's this message right here. So it should say, must be a number between 0 and, you know, 0 and 4. That's what ideally it's going to say. All right. I could have written more constants, but here I'll just put in, well, the other thing I want to pass is invalid GPA input. All right. I'm just going to leave it at that. So if I hit that, whoops, I'm sorry. Put it, hold it, hold it, hold it. This is in the wrong place. My error. That goes here. Hey, when I'm going like that, if I make a mistake or you think, I don't think that you mean to do that, please call me on it. All right? So that will give me that alert, and we'll write that routine in just a minute, and we're going to take a break. All right, that, that'll give me that alert. But this will say we put in an invalid GPA. Now, and I'll, I want to take your question, but before we do, there's two more things I want to do if that's invalid. What are they? We've done this before. So let's imagine I run the program and I put hello right there. All right, I've given the user a message. What else do I want to do? Clear the focus. Clear, the, clear what's in there and give it the focus. You got a question, John? Yes, this may end up having to move. I don't know. All right, it just popped into my head right now. That's not the way I actually wrote it on my program, on, on my hard copy here. So we may end up moving this. I don't know. But yes, you, you very well could be right. But again, what do I want to do? Again, I want to take my text box, gpa.text, and I want to clear it. And then I want to take my text box, gpa, and give it the focus. All right, I want to do both those, OK? I'm going to write the, the two lines of code that we need to put into 
that alert message and it's actually one line of code, we're going to put that in there and then we're taking a break. Does everyone who wants this code have this code up to here? All right, then I'm going to go down to where we've got that alert message and I'm going to write that line of code right here, which is just message box dot show. Again, notice the IntelliSense. If I type in this, see how it's red? The system doesn't recognize that because there is nothing called message BX. But if I put in an OX, it turns blue, a light blue, meaning that it's recognized by the system most of the time, not always, but most of the time when you get that color blue and you put a dot there, all right, it shows you the different methods you can call. I want to call the show message. Oops. I want to call the show message right here. And what do I want to do? Well, I've got a message that I'm passing in. I've got a title that I'm passing in. And this, if, this is going to be called if there is an error. Boy, oh boy. So I'm going to say here message box buttons dot OK and message box icon dot error. So now I'm letting you know you did make an error. I'm giving you a message. I'm giving you a title. I'm giving you just an OK button. There's no yes, no button or something like that here. You made an error. I'm letting you know. You click OK, you're telling me you know you made an error. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, John brought up a good point before. I may have to move the code that's up here. We may have to move this. But for now, I just want to see what it looks like. And then we're taking a break. So I'm going to run this. And I'm going to put in garbage here. I'm going to click Calculate. And, yeah, it looks like I got it the wrong place. All right. So we'll take, I'll take a look at that during the break. I want to give you a, a, a decent break. It's 9.02. Let's start up again, please, at 9.15.